Hey everyone, this is Pooja Chilakuri with Pooja Chilakuri Nutrition and Health. I'm your host for the wellness education series, Be Made Whole. Today, I am very happy and very delighted to have my friend and colleague, Liz Khan. She is joining us today and she is going to help us learn about emotional well-being. And before I introduce um, Liz and let her tell her story, I just would like to just read a little bit from Liz's bio because I know I can't do it justice. You're trained in a lot of different things. Okay, so Liz is the founder of You Be Well, and she's the co-founder of Triangle Holistic Connections. Liz is trained in a variety of modalities, including Reiki, art therapy, glasswork, clinical psychology, and also behavioral science. Liz teaches us tools to cope with anxiety, anger, stress, depression, and also her favorite thing to do is to teach us the how of letting go, moving on, and getting over it. Welcome, Liz. Thanks, Pooja. Yeah. I would just like to say one thing, though. The glasswork is not a modality in counseling. It's just for fun. Like, I like to make stained glass. Awesome. Well, that's therapeutic, right? It is. So, but I can't teach anybody, and it's dangerous, <laughs> so I let professionals do that. <laughs> All right. I am so happy that you joined us today. Can you tell us a little bit about what led you to do what you're doing, you know, helping people with their emotional journey, with their well-being? Yeah, I think, you know, a quick snippet of the story is I spent most of my career working with families and children who are affected by autism. And what I discovered was that when my clients, usually kids, right, when my kids were in a good mood, we got great results. When they were in bad moods, we got not great results. And so learning just from this population of children who cannot speak, right? They're, they're not like self-aware, they're not identifying things in their environment that are upsetting them. But, cause it's not about the things. Our emotions have so much to do with how we show up and what we're capable of, right? So it's not because I'm in a bad mood that I, I don't, I don't know the material for the test, right? It's that I can't focus on it. So anyway, so I translated a lot of the things that I learned working with families that couldn't communicate, right? Um, into working with people who were kind of over communicating. Mm -hmm. So I started working a lot with anxiety and depression and you hear a lot of stories with that. And mm -hmm. what you, I recognize is the less intense that feeling was for them through whatever modalities I was using, the more their stories would change, the more their actions would change. And so I dove in um, with the help of somebody amazing. His name is Kelly Burris in Los Angeles. Um, and then what I've brought to this as well, now we have this system of tools that helps people interrupt that emotional process, which is not to say that it takes everything away, but it helps you function at your best in the moment so that you can do that processing at a better time mm -hmm. and feel okay about it. Is that, that's how that, I got it. Cause I needed it too. <laughs> we all need it. Right? We all need it all the time. I just realized, you know, emotions make up such a huge part of who we are. Oh yeah. And one emotion can control like the whole day and either make it or break it. Right. So I think what you're doing is awesome. Right. Well, and I, I love that you say that because, you know, what, when you say that, it, it tells us what the truth about what humans understand about emotion is, is that something external happens and now we're stuck with it. And what my program does is it teaches people to recognize the external things, but not become stuck with the emotional baggage that comes with it. It's Absolutely. so cool. It is cool. It is cool because I've heard you speak and I'm excited. I want you to share, you know, one or two tools that uh, we can use if we're feeling stuck in a negative emotion. You want me to do that now? Yeah. One is fine. Yeah. Okay. Well, so this is going to sound super fundamental and basic. And the problem is it is super fundamental and basic. And therefore mo most adults think who needs that or it's childish or worse I should have learned this back then, all right? So I want everybody who's listening to relieve themselves of that, that weight, right? So the first thing is to say, okay, maybe I should have, but I didn't, and that's okay, because here's where I am today. But here's that basic fundamental thing. 
we absolutely must interrupt. Mm -hmm. The moment you recognize that you are in a feeling state or in a thought pattern or you're stuck in an image that best case scenario isn't serving you, worst case scenario is dragging you down mm -hmm. to interrupt. This is not to say interrupt and then ignore, right? There's two parts to this. So you interrupt and then you have to make a choice. Mm -hmm. So you have to say at that point, what would be better and how can I get there? And I recommend using that language specifically. Interrupt, what would be better and how can I get there? Mm -hmm. Does it sound too simple? It does, right? But here's the thing, we are not in the habit of doing that. And our habits drive us more than anything because like, think about how we blink or breathe. It's automatic, right? Our habits are so automatic. But once we put some intention into taking a deeper breath, letting our eyes linger at closed for a touch longer, once we set our intention on doing something, we suddenly have power over it. So if we can do that with that, you know, nervous feeling or with those thoughts that are going through our heads, I should have, I must have, why didn't I interrupt? What would be better and how can I get there? Mm -hmm. So simple, so hard, so hard. And I'm really excited because you're about to ask me one more question, right? Yes. <laughs> now, I was just going to ask you how, you know, like that is very powerful, right? Like just being mindful and catching yourself. Catch and what you me. just said resonated with me because I didn't realize that just by doing that, I'm giving myself power. I'm separating myself from that, you know, in that moment, right? So I was going to ask you what you do next. Like once you interrupt and you, you're like, so sorry, you go ahead, Liz. No, I mean, because you, know, you asked the question, right? Can, yeah. I, can I deviate for a second? Because part of the foundation of my program is that when you ask yourself a question, you get an answer. Yeah. No matter what, right? Like, oh, what was that person's name? It doesn't come immediately, but it comes, right? Yeah. So all of our viewers, I ask you a question. How careful are you about the questions that you ask yourself? Mm -hmm if you know that every question is answered. So when you interrupt and ask that question, what would be better and how can I get there? You're gonna get that answer. Yeah. So I have a challenge for everybody. Can I give a challenge? For yes, everybody? please, because we please. always want that. Okay, my challenge for everybody is to look for five opportunities. Five fingers, you can put a little mark on your finger or just remember which one, but five opportunities every single day to interrupt and ask a question. I'm gonna tell you that many people can do this five times before they get out of bed. But the longer you do this, the longer you make this challenge part of your day, the more spread out they will become because you will be not allowing those external things to impact the rest of your day, right? Mm -hmm. So the more practice you get at interrupting and asking that question, what would be better and how can I get there? What would be better and how can I get how there? How can I get there? Right? Like, yeah. every time you do that, you're gonna start seeing day after day that this, we call it the inter-response time, right? The time mm -hmm. between behaviors. It actually starts getting really long because you're doing better, you're functioning better much better it's like you're building up your resilience against those negative patterns that's what right. i mean and for any scientists in our audience like oh my god the data on this stuff is stellar you can see first of all the inner response time lengthening the intensity of your emotional responses will decrease just from taking that moment and this is what empowerment is right interrupting those painful cycles and saying, I don't have to do that this time. What would be better and how can I get there? Yes. I think that's great, Liz, because we know that when we repeat, we're laying down more neural pathways to develop that habit or that 
it's like a conditioning, but if for a good cause, right? You hit the nail on the head and I try so hard not to use behavioral jargon, but yes, it is absolutely conditioning. And the more we practice something, right? This is my favorite example. When you think about a pianist at Carnegie Hall, okay, one of the most elite places where you could, you know, do your, your music, they practice, 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 practice. Why? So that when the fear comes in, their muscle memory takes over. Yeah. And if we can do that with our emotions, if we can do that with our old patterns that we know, I mean, if you can say, I say this, and my partner says this, and then I da 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 you've identified a pattern, you can interrupt it, right? You can say, what would be better? And how can I get there? And everything changes and it feels natural, which is my favorite part. Because when the answer comes from within, not from somebody else, yeah. you just function that way. Yeah. It is empowering. It's very empowering when you find the answer. Liz, this is so powerful. And I really hope that people that are watching this, well, we can practice this, especially when I tell my audience, you know, just try practicing this for one week, right? One week. Five yep. times a day, look for five opportunities. Yeah, five what opportunities. Happens? I'm going to do that, and I'm going to let you know how it goes. <laughs> I look forward to that. And before, before I let you go, though, because this has been really, really good. I just want to know, where can people find you if you want to learn more, work with you? You know, just where can we find you? Okay, I am always available by text, and I got to tell you, I love getting text messages. And so you can always text me at 919-756-4548. My website is really complicated. It is myname.com, but actually that is kind of complicated. L-I-Z-K-A-H-N. It might actually be written on your thing, um, on your recording. So lizcon.com, I think that's pretty much it. You can email me too, but you'll find that on my website. So go there and play. Um, I'm forever uploading blogs and fun little tips. I've got a couple of meditation tips and visualization tricks that are magic. And those are just giveaways. So I'm going to go there and sign up right now <laughs> as soon as we're done. And I'll put all that information in the notes so people can have it. Thanks for having me, Pooja. This is really fun. This was fun for me too. I love seeing you, Liz. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye.